Good morning, class. Welcome to SMS, the Slumlord Maintenance School. I would like to start by congratulating you in advance. If you met the qualifications to enroll in SMS, it means that you are already so surly, dismissive, and incompetent that no other maintenance organization or training course would have you. Your lack of hard work, dedication, and interpersonal skills has set a clear career path for you that many can only aspire to. Hold on. You with the balding head in the third row. Your name? Uh, Lester? Lester, would you mind sharing with the class what you're wearing and why? Uh, jeans and a t-shirt teach just like everyone else. Yeah, but what's that thing wrapped around your waist? A belt. My pants were a little loose and kept falling down below my butt crack. Just who are you trying to impress, Lester? Self-awareness goes against everything we here at SMS stand for. Now, normally that would get you a demerit. But since this is your first day and you didn't know, I'm going to cut you some slack and let you off with a warning. Now, take off that belt and I hope we don't have to have this discussion again. All right, Teach. Very good. Let's get started. The first thing we like to review is our motto which also happens to be the best response to a service request you don't know how to fix. We should be using this often, so let's say it together. I oh, know a guy. guy. That was damn near perfect, but someone sounded a bit off. Let's try it again. I, I know, know a guy. guy. Wait a minute. Who is that who said the different thing? It is me, sir. My name is Percy. Run what you said by me one more time. Percy... I am acquainted with a fellow. Class, what in the hell is this guy saying? No, he's got, me. Me. He's got, he's got no the foggiest. Percy ain't no one can't understand you. You're going to have to get a certificate from Dina's School of Diction before you can graduate from SMS. Moving on. Now I'm going to present a scenario for you, and I want you to try to give me your best response. You get a service request from a lady who just moved into an apartment. She's complaining that her refrigerator is old and smelly, and doesn't close properly. What is the best way to respond to her? Replace the old refrigerator with a brand new one. You're kidding me, right? This is the slumlord maintenance school, not the let's waste the landlord's money school. Can someone give me a better answer? Replace the refrigerator with another old crappy one. Much, much better answer. Bonus points if the replacement one is louder, has missing or broken handles and shelves, and it's even better if it trips up all the circuit breakers every time it kicks on. That'll teach it a bitch. Remember, landfills are chock full of these babies. We're never going to run out. Now, does anyone want to take a guess as to the best possible answer? Anyone? All right, you in the back. Don't answer her at all. She's a dame. Nailed it. Great job. Females are to be ignored as much as possible. If she's married or has a boyfriend, ignore her completely and talk to the man instead. If you can make her feel totally invisible, you've done your job. If there's no man around and you gotta talk to her, always remember that she is a woman, which makes her an idiot. So make sure to talk to her that way. If she doesn't like it, she can buy her own damn refrigerator or move, am I right? Preach it, brother. <laughs> All right, let's try one more before our first break. Speaking of break... You get a service order for a broken window. What do you use to replace it? Yes? A glass pane. Not a bad answer, but not a great one. Anyone have a better one? Plexiglass. Good. It's cheaper and most people won't notice the difference or care. Does anyone have an even better answer? Cellophane and packing tape. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Clyde. Class, do not laugh. Clyde is as close to a genius as we have ever had here. You hit the nail on the head, buddy. The bottom line is we do the BAM here. B-A-M stands for Barely Acceptable Minimum. We will be reviewing BAM over the next several hours as it's going to be essential to your financial success. Remember, you get to pocket the difference. Well, that's enough for the first hour. Smoke break. Grab your camels from the basket by the door. I don't smoke. <gasps> what did he say? Clyde, did you just say you don't smoke? No, never have. You don't smoke anything? Nope. Well, I'm sorry to say, Clyde, that you're not a good fit for SMS after all. I had such high hopes for you. Perhaps you should enroll at Accidental Academy next door. 
I'll see the rest of you back here in two hours. Class dismissed. Welcome to Counterculture Wise, a Stormcap production. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the hosts, our guests, and the dog, and do not necessarily reflect the views of any of our platforms, our advertisers, or any other dog. As you listen today, please remember, we are so much more than a podcast. All of our stories we discuss are linked in our show notes on counterculturewise.com. Visit there for commentary, guest photos and links, animations, and fun merchandise. If you have a story idea or would like to be a guest on our show, contact us via our website. You can also follow us on Twitter, Gab, Instagram, Facebook, and all over social media where we'll post memes, cat pics, and commentary that gets us booted off on a regular basis. If you're listening live, be sure to join our chat on Spreaker. If you're listening dead, please stop voting Democrat, but enjoy the show anyway. And a fine howdy duty to everybody here at Counterculture Wise. It is an amazing day, a beautiful day, a fantastic day, a really, really hot day. Yeah, Almost quite like warm. Rain tonight, so I'm sure the farmers will be happy. Welcome to another fabulous Sunday here in Counterculture Wise Studios. I am your hostess with the mostest, Ms. Melanie Hope, and here with me in studio is, well, at least my best friend happens to be my husband. All around great guy, good writer, great singer, mm, decent photographer. I haven't seen any pictures lately, but yeah, he's pretty good at that. Learning oh how my. to play the bass, learning how to do new things. Oh, oh wait, and he's and, bald. Yeah, well, I'll let you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> and and my sweet babu, Mr. James Blodes. A rabbi, a priest, and a leprechaun walk into a bar, and the leprechaun says, Sands preserve us, I'm in the wrong joke. (laughs) That was the first one that came to mind. I realized that I didn't have a fresh dad joke ready, so I brought in a really stale and stinky one. A stale, stinky dad joke. Yes. Okay, well, yeah. (laughs) It is so good to be here tonight. So good. Uh, we Last week, I want to apologize, we had kind of a semi-professional show last week because of a bunch of electricity problems. Um, but, as always, um, hardship develops into comedy here at Counterculture Wise. So we're going to very soon have a sketch on the show regarding... <laughs> Landlords and electricity. And based on a true story. Yeah. But for now, we have. We want to start the show with the latest news. This could actually have been replayed several times over the last seven years, but we've got him now. Trump is in legal trouble. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah, whoopty. Anyway, let's get let's get to the basics, and then we'll have our usual incisive commentary. All right, Donald Trump. This is on June eighth. Donald Trump has been indicted by a federal grand jury for retaining classified document. Was it when I was just about to say classified document governments? Classified document governments. Yes. Gotcha. I'm no, I'm, I'm no better than the president I keep making fun of, but anyway. Okay, folks, I'm working on the microphone. Even if I turn it off, 
yeah, it's not picking me up at all. So, excuse me while I pop in every now and then. Okay. This stupid. That, that's okay. It says it's on. All right. Well, anyway, for retaining classified government documents and obstruction of justice, according to a lawyer for the former U.S. president and another source familiar with the matter, the criminal case brought by the U.S. Department of Justice, Joseph Biden's Department of Justice, amounts to yet another legal setback for Trump as he seeks to regain the U.S. presidency next year. I don't think this is going to be a legal setback. I mean, it's a legal setback, but I don't think it's going to be a professional setback for him at all. He already faces a criminal case in New York that is due to go to trial in March. Trump said on social media that he had been summoned to appear at the federal courthouse in Miami on Tuesday. Would somebody explain to me how this is not election interference? Well, because it's not election time yet, right? So the, the, there, there you go. I am an innocent man. I was the wrong, wrong accent. I'm an innocent man, he wrote on his Truth Social platform. A spokesperson for Special Counsel Jack Smith, the Justice Department official who's handling the investigation, declined to comment. It is illegal for the government to comment publicly on any sealed grand jury matter. Well, kudos to them for keeping their yak shut then for a change. Trump faces seven criminal counts in the federal case, said the source who spoke on condition of anonymity. Now, as we discussed on the show before, it's seven of the same thing, right? What wasn't it? Anonymity. Anonymity. do 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 Anemone. Uh, an enemy. <laughs> Guacamole. Anyway. Uh, why, why did that crack you up? Anyway, I don't know. Guacamole. Speaking on CNN. Guacamole is just such a great and fun word. It is. It is. Um, it's also a fantastic food. It is Speaking a very good on food. CNN, Trump lawyer Jim Trusty. We're not making this up. That's his real name. Jim Trusty. Jim Trusty. That's his name. Yeah. Jim Trusty. Yep. Said those. That's your story, and we're sticking to it. No. Well, actually, that's Reuters' story, and we're sticking <laughs> to it. Um, Hello, my name is Jim Trusty, fellow kids. <laughs> yeah. Jim Trusty said those charges include conspiracy, Trusty. false statements, obstruction of justice, and illegally retaining classified documents under the Espionage Act. Un- unlike Biden, who was vice president at the time and did not have permission to do it, that's hunky dokey. Hunky dokey? Anyway. He said he expects to see the indictment between now, that being June 8th, and Tuesday. Reuters could not independently confirm what specific charges Trump is facing. In a sworn statement to a federal court last year, an FBI said, agent said, there was probable cause to believe several crimes were... Oh, let's just do it. ...were committed, <laughs> including obstruction and the illegal saw. retention of sensitive defense records. You no, know, they've been keeping him out of limelight a lot lately. Probably best. The Justice Department has been investigating whether Trump mishandled classified documents he retained after leaving the White House in 2021. Investigators seized roughly 13,000 documents from Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida, nearly a year ago. 100 were marked as classified. Okay, out of 13,000, 100 were marked as classified. Even though one of Trump's lawyers had previously said all records with classified markings had been returned to the government. Okay, that might be a problem. Trump has previously defended his retention of documents, suggesting he declassified them while president. However, Trump has not provided evidence of this, and his, de- and his attorneys have declined to make that argument in court filings. It marks the second time that Trump, the first former president in U.S., history to face criminal charges has been indicted. In April, he pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records relating to hush money paid to a porn star before the 2016 election. It's funny, they don't even mention her name anymore. Did you notice that? Yeah. President from 2017 to 2021, Trump is the frontrunner in the race for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination. 
this is this following statement is quite true, and I I must admit I admire him for this. Well, Through the also, year, wait, before you go on, yeah. they also mm-hmm. don't mention the fact that she lost the case so hard that she has to pay for the lawyer's fees. Yeah, she went. They talk about the indictment, but they don't talk about the fact that she lost. Yeah. Through the years, Trump has shown an uncanny ability to weather controversies that might torpedo other politicians. He describes himself as the victim of a politically motivated witch hunt and accuses the Justice Department of partisan bias. I can't say that's untrue. I am not a Trump sycophant, but I happen to think that's true. Prove me wrong, people. Trump's lead has grown over his rivals in the Republican nominating contest since he was indicted in the New York case. Reuters Ipsos polling shows. Um, this is a very, very long article, and I don't want to bore I you to tears. I think going to end it's, up like, um, was it Biko or uh, Mandela that ended up becoming president from prison? I, I believe that was Mandela. I mean, it's like the more... The more they prosecute him, or persecute him, pardon me, the more they persecute him, just the worse they look. Well, because it's quite blatantly partisan. If the roles were switched and a Republican, if if somebody was coming after Biden, and Biden had scant evidence of having done anything, they'd be screaming witch hunt from here to Mississippi. But, you know... Well, and they did, and we found a witch, and her name is Clinton. Well, okay. That that much is true. Who? Anyway, it's uh, just another. I mean, I want your insight, Melanie. What what makes them think this is going to be different this time? Because they don't care. They honestly don't care. It's it's not about the fact that they have anything or don't. It's not about. It's just they're dragging it out, and and frankly, having. Let me try to get my thoughts in order here. They they are hoping that if they just drag it out and drag it out and drag it out, that he won't have a chance at all of winning because they're scared of him. Well, because he started pointing out who they were, and they had to pull the trigger on an, a global pandemic in order to get him to stop. Yeah. And you're not gonna. I'm. We're on YouTube. I'm sure we'll get booted off. But nobody is ever gonna convince me that that was not planned. They used that to take back their power. He didn't... Dra- I'm, I'm still mad Not as hell at him. He didn't back, drain the swamp. To... He didn't do a lot of the things he said he was going to do, but he started. And that absolutely terrified them. Scared the living snot out of them. And so they shut that bitch down. And they're just going to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. And keep at it. And keep at it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I, th- I mean, the results were the same as the last time, and maybe they shouldn't have done this. The results being he got more popular every time this kind of thing happened. Yeah. And it's not showing any signs of stopping. Well, it, He has it, this amazing ability to, to look, make every other Republican candidate, even moderate, you know, level-headed ones look like a bunch of morons. And well, it's and gotten to the point where every time they're like, "Oh, Trump did this and Trump did that," you're just like, "Yeah, really?" You know, I mean, they have lied so much and have gotten so much wrong and have gotten away with so much that people just aren't even listening to them anymore. And I don't think they realize. They remind me, okay, for all you nerds out there. That Star Trek episode, original Star Trek, with the um, kind of, I think they were the precursor to the Q character, where it turns out that the, the creature that was tormenting the entire crew is actually just a kid. Right. And the parents step in. He's like, but I was it's winning. Me. I was I mean, winning. That's one that of my That is favorites. the entire Democratic Party right now. They're tormenting, torturing, you know, the rest of us. They're, they're, you know, destroying their credibility, and they don't care. They don't care. They're a bunch of just sycophantic. And what's really weird is you're taking these older people like Biden, who doesn't, you know, know where he is half the damn time. And he always was kind of pervy and, and 
and corrupt. But now he is all in on, you know, trans kids nonsense. I don't think he even knows what he's talking about. More on that later. I don't think Emphasis he even has... Emphasis on moron. Yeah. I honestly don't think he has the foggiest notion what he's saying. I don't think he really... And, you know, the, the whole thing with, oh, puberty blockers, you can go off them any time. Yeah, once you're sterilized and you have osteoporosis and you've ruined that child's life. Here's gender-affirming care, ladies and gentlemen. No, Billy, you're a boy. Love ya. Here's a peanut butter sandwich. The end. You know, I have a friend, and I, I, I doubt she listens to this show or ever will. Protecting her because she is my friend. I'm not going to mention her name, where she lives, or anything like that. She and her husband have, I don't know how many kids, but three of them are trans, and two of them have gone into mental health. Now, how the living Christ does that happen? Three out of five children are trans? That is some next-level sickness. Those kids need to be taken away. Yeah. Those kids need to be removed from that home. That, That is Munchausen by proxy. Those people are ill, and they need to have their children taken away. Those kids need to be kids. The odds are astronomical, like beyond even comprehension, that three out of five children are trans. I don't know if there's a total of five. I just know that at least three of them. Three out of uh, 50 children. I mean, astronomical. Yeah. Ridiculous. So those people, I wouldn't be able to call them friends. That's that's perverted. That is twisted. That is sick. And what they're doing to those children is absolutely abysmal. These people are, I can't, they're not even worshiping the devil. They're worshiping something even less. They're, they're vile. They're evil. What they're doing to the children, this, this is a cult. It this is, is a was, cult. I would say it was at least a fad. You know, I think that no, a fad is painting your nails black or getting a tattoo well, or mean, dyeing yes, your hair is, green. And, but they're chopping this, off your saying, children's no, yeah, body saying, parts. Saying, My saying. God, no, that's a cult. Yes, it, it's just repugnant. Oh my God, I don't think I could. I could even talk to her. That's just those poor children. Yeah. My Lord. You know, when I say it, I mean, yeah, it's a cult, but it, I mean, it's, it seems to be a fad, but it's like we've said on the show before, you know, a fad is like cargo pants or mullets or, you know, granny glasses or, or whatever. This is not a fad. This is like, because those can come and go. You're not going to have, it's minor cosmetic stuff. This is not like destroying a soul of a kid. It's, it, this is like. Yeah, chat says just because they may have gone into mommy and daddy's closet and played dress up at one point doesn't mean that everyone in the family is trans now. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, these people are disgusting because they are using their children for clout. They are using their children for clout. And... It's just really, really sad. Yeah. Really sad what they're doing. That's that's those poor children. And these are permanent. Right. I mean... Permanent things that you're doing to your child. They won't be able to have sex properly. They won't be able to reproduce. You know. Then well, again, plus the suicide rate goes up. Well, you like mutilate said, a child. Well, like I said, they've... Two, at least two of them have wound up in mental wards. So. Of course they have. Two two out of the five trans kids? Or? I don't know what the numbers are anymore. You get me confused with the three versus five versus and these, 27. These people but. are praying <laughs> an unusually high number of these kids are autistic. Yeah. So not are, only are you preying on children, you sick, twisted, disgusting perverts, but you're preying on vulnerable children who already have mental issues Mm -hmm. these children should be nurtured and loved and helped not tormented and mutilated and told that there's something they're not it just 
I just want to puke. I just, ugh. And there's not a damn thing you can do. There's well, not a no. damn thing you can do. You just watch these. And, you know, that's just, if these people were caught kicking a puppy or, like, not feeding their kid or something, they'd be jailed. Right. But you can literally torture your child. You can literally rip them apart, take off, you know, give them drugs that will sterilize them, and that's considered gender affirming. No. No. These people have... What's really sad is they're actually gaslighting these kids into thinking that they have a mental problem that they don't because the parents do. Right. We are so getting kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> I don't even know why I pulled the YouTube kicked, trigger but, anymore. Uh, hey, kicked off of what now? Yeah, yeah. I don't even care. I I, I don't even know why. There's I... so many alternatives. <laughs> we're everywhere we, else, we're too. We're going to be on a couple of new ones before very long <laughs> if I have anything to say about it or do yeah. with it. So I'm, I just, I'm not, God, those poor children. I'm not children. worried about it. Those poor children. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want to dwell on that. We, we, we and and that. all for political clout, all to say yeah. that you're somehow better than other people you know it's no you're not you are sick and twisted and you're abusing your children you disgusting perverts how did we get there from uh, i don't know i don't know (laughs) (laughs) you started it yeah i did didn't i Um, but we kept saying we weren't going to talk about national pedo month so well some stuff is just too good i mean we we got to talk about biden addressing the issue (laughs) Because it's just, it's so, I think I it's do so have the incredibly sound clip. Biden. I need to uh, see we'll, if I can get it. We'll chat about that in a few minutes. But we... Well, why don't we shift gears and do some weird and wonderful because... Because we need some weird and wonderful. Yeah, we need weird and wonderful in our lives. Counterculture Wise is proud to present News of the Weird and Wonderful. Here are your hosts... Melanie Hope and Jim Monis. <laughs> okay, this one. I'm wondering what they're going to do with this, so hopefully we'll find out here. This is interesting. Yeah. All a right. California family stumbled upon a crawl space in their home while prepping for renovations. But they had no idea they'd soon be owners of over a million pennies. A million, a million pennies. pennies. That's a lot of... That, boy, Coinstar's going to be happy. A year Jesus. ago, John Reyes was cleaning out his father-in-law's home in the Pico Union neighborhood in Los Angeles with his wife, her twin sister, and her cousin. When they, Boy, that's a lot of extra information. We do not need people. This must be like a word count thing. <laughs> um, Los Angeles is what... Blah, blah, blah. Um, when they just came across a crawl space that they didn't know existed. You know, I'm curious what's in the crawl space above us besides dead squirrels. <laughs> I don't even want to know. The, who knows? Te- who knows Texas what's up there? has like squirrels the size of giraffes and <laughs> and, and spiders the the size of Montana. And and spiders I, I the don't size wanna, of squirrels. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, and frogs the size of itty bitty little grapes. They're so cute. Uh, Ray's and his wife. Who? What is with all this extra stupid information? Ray's and his wife, who we met when he was fifteen. I don't care. That has nothing to do with the story. And the sky was blue and his hair was red. And my God, always knew about the basement, but had no idea there was a crawl space. I've been around her family for so many years and we always knew about the basement. It was kind of eerie looking. So we never went down there. But now we know there was so much stuff in the space. So it's more of a headache of we just got to get this all cleaned out. The Ontario resident told the news station. Ray said the crawl space was basically hidden and that he had found some loose pennies at first before uncovering the huge sum. Searching turned into finding boxes of pennies and crates. Then we all came across, I'll say, what I think is super old bank bags, Ray said. Some of them were even closed with some lead function they must have used back in the day. Some lead function? I don't know what that means. Ray's was told the house built in the early 1900s was originally used as a bed and breakfast. My wife's father and his brother moved from Germany when they were young lads, Ray's told McClatchy News. They lived in the house together for well over 50 years. The brothers who Ray's described as war babies understood the importance of metals and the value they might hold in the future. Oh, yeah, because these pennies are that old. They might actually have some real metal in them, unlike our pennies nowadays that are just made out of zinc. They kept everything like some of these banks don't even exist anymore, he said. 
Ray's father-in-law died 10 years ago, and his brother moved out of the home two years ago due to health reasons, Ray said, and that's when the family got together to start cleaning out the home. We found these pennies about a year ago, and I wanted to take the story to news outlets, but we're private, low-key families, so after bringing it up for months, I was able to get the green light from everyone. Uh, now they want to sell the pennies. We want to sell them, but we... But what we know is there's this craze on the Internet of people looking for a million-dollar penny. We just want to sell them to someone who knows they could sell them for more than penny value. Well, I'd be looking at all those pennies and seeing if that million pennies, because there's an article right here that says 10 pennies sold for a whopping $1.1 million in California, so I'd be looking at that. Wow. Can you imagine that? Just... uh... Stumbling upon a penny that's worth millions? Well, well, I mean, no worse. Just going through your cash, you know, making your purchases, mm. you know, and buying, and buying a somehow, gumball. <laughs> and, and somehow that million dollar penny goes into, like you said, a gumball machine. It's yeah. crazy, crazy. Which would be my luck, frankly. <laughs> and this is for, this is from our, our old stomping grounds. A Las Vegas UFO video and 911 call released by police in Nevada have gone viral oh, after... Oh, good old Las Vegas. Yeah. Has gone viral. People are actually taking this seriously. It's hilarious. Anyway, after a family reported an alien crash in their backyard. Yeah, because that's where, you know, superior life forms are going to crash, is in the, somebody's backyard in Las Vegas. I don't know. According to 8 News Now... Legitimate news source. It's, uh, at least I think it is. Yeah, it's the CBS station there. Which obtained the body camera video from police. A Las Vegas family told authorities that something had crashed into their backyard in April 30, on April 30th, 2023, and they believe they saw aliens. Mm-hmm. Several people I saw it, the television station did. reported. Mm-hmm. A circular imprint in the dirt is visible in their backyard, 8 News Now reported. The report comes shortly after David Charles Grush, an U- a U.S. Air Force veteran, intelligence officer, and UFO whistleblower, accused the government of possessing intact and partially intact craft of non-human origin, according to the debrief. You've, we've we talked about this on the show before, right? Or have we? Anyway. The aliens? Yeah. No. Okay. A police body cam video captured a green or blue ball did falling to the... I can't remember. The, I don't think we did. I, I don't know. Anyway, I've, I've heard it mentioned on one of the shows we listen to, so maybe yeah. uh, maybe that made its way into my brain. A police body cam video reported or captured a green or blue ball falling to the ground, and the family made the 911 call a short time later, according to New York Post. Officers were sent to speak with the family. I have butterflies, bro. Saw a shooting star. <laughs> and now these people say there's aliens in their backyard, man. Well, an, op- an officer says in the body camera. If it's not Nazis video. under the bed, it's aliens in the backyard. There you go. Officers then spoke with the family members who made the 911 call. What did you see? An officer asked the body cam video. It was like a big creature, one witness said. All right, so where's the creature? Anyway, mm-hmm. a big creature. The oh, yeah, asked. which magically made everything fuzzy. So you Yeah, can take more than 10 of feet uh-huh, tall, the uh-huh. witness said. I'm not going to BS you guys. One of my partners said they saw something fall out of the sky, too, the officer said. So that's why I'm kind of curious. Did you see anything land in your backyard? They see like something with light, a family member says. Police then investigated in the backyard, but that part of the video wasn't released, of course. Of course. Just like other video that never got released. But anyway, an officer asked another person. It is, isn't it magical how um, they, they actually admitted that they had surveillance video, which magically turned off. Vegas has a real bad problem with surveillance videos. And now off the head of it all is the, governor. Yeah. So cool. At the exact all right, right time. <laughs> so might- convenient. <laughs> An officer asked another person in the car, oh, geez, this might sound like a really dumb question, but did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? I'm, I'm almost tempted to play Creedence Clearwater Revival as it came out of the sky. I was just like, there's a bathroom on no, the right. Wrong different one. song. Okay. Way different song. <laughs> I would normally discount it as nothing. However, seeing as one of my partners said they saw it too, the only reason I'm in... Is the only reason I'm investigating it further. Eight News now said it remained undetermined what fell into the backyard. The cre- and the creatures were gone. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, there, there's there's one that they say is the size of a football field. 
So an alien spaceship the size of a football field landed somewhere and ain't nobody saw it but the government. Nobody saw it. Just the government. But the dad gum government. <laughs> and and these things always crash land in places like Vegas or Montana. Never like Sudan or, you know, the outskirts of Nigeria or <laughs> Well but if it landed out there. And, and the government would know the government's always right it. on top of it, like right away, so nobody knows it's happened. You know, come on. How desperate She's, are you? you my wife is a little more skeptical How than I am about these things. How desperate are you? I mean But you know. Chuck agrees with me. <laughs> Good for Chuck. Yeah. His job's not at risk. We're desperately trying to keep him, for God's sake. <laughs> Poor guy. Okay. So, I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, it's a thing. It's a thing, and I didn't know it was a thing. Going from cocks to jackasses sounds about right. After 116 years, the donkey has kicked the rooster off its perch atop the Democratic ballot in Oklahoma. Last Sunday, the Oklahoma Democratic Party convention voted without much opposition to replace the rooster that has represented the party in Oklahoma ballots and statehood and territorial ones before that with the more familiar donkey, which traces its origins as a party symbol to 1828. Only the Democrats would embrace being called jackasses and literally make that their <laughs> their mascot. <sighs> For generations, stamping the rooster meant voting Democrat in Oklahoma. And in other states where the symbol was and is still used, it originated with an 1840 Indiana State House of Representatives race in which the Democratic candidate was encouraged to crow like a rooster about the party's goals and achievements. But state party chairwoman Alicia Andrews, who was elected to a third two-year term at the convention because they can't possibly vote for someone else, said some Democrats thought a change was in order. As I've traveled across the state, Democrats have told me they don't like the rooster, Andrews said last week. Some think the rooster... Oh, my God. Do I really have to I'm, re- I'm really glad you read this one. Some think the rooster is racist. A racist <laughs> rooster. It turns out the rooster symbol does have racist connotations. Originally, the root, yeah, big cocks, black dudes. I get it. Oh, dear. <laughs> I went now there. Now I'm not happy that you read it. <laughs> The, the oh. views expressed on <laughs> counterculture-wise are sometimes not, not those of every host Originally, the, the rooster just meant being <laughs> proud and loud, like the Rainbow Mafia, so they should be happy with the rooster. In 1904, however, the Alabama Democratic Party adopted the emblem, featuring a bird with the banner, white supremacy and floral... De- I Hit X to doubt. I'm not buying this. According to some sources... Some sources. The emblem celebrated a new state constitution that effectively disenfranchised blacks. So you not seen a picture of this or any confirmation that this uh, actually happened, but, you know, whatevs. The white supremacy motto remained on the Alabama emblem until 1966. I'm going to be looking that up to see if that even exists because I noticed they didn't include it here. <laughs> white supremacy. Um, segregation split the Democratic Party nationally and in Oklahoma after World War II and contributed to a major party realignment where now they're all racist so segregation no longer splits them up they're splitting themselves up this is my one of my favorite parts this is donkeys a, and actual, Democrats uh, first made common cause in 1828 yeah. when opponents of Andrew Jackson referred to him Roots. as a jackass <laughs> rather than protest Jackson began using images of donkeys in his campaign material sounds about right no, Andrew and Jackson was a badass. 1837 lithograph depicts yeah. Jackson riding a donkey that is refusing to go where he wants. When Jackson faded from the scene, so did the donkey, which created an opening for the rooster. Then in 1870, cartoonist Thomas Nass revived the donkey to represent the Copperheads, a faction of Northern Democrats who had opposed the Civil War. Well, there were Democrats who opposed. Sure there were. Sure. It's like, can't we just keep them? Do we have to fight over them? 
Soon the donkey came to represent the entire party. Fittingly. Nast also popularized the elephant as a Republican symbol, most famously in 1874 cartoon in which the Democratic Party is actually a fox. <laughs> but pachydermic portrayals of the GOP founded in 1854 originated during the Civil War a decade earlier. I love the term pachydermic. Yeah. It's just, that's a pa great, pachydermic great word. Pachydermic is a great word. Pachydermic, yes. It's a pachydermic hypodermic. It's a big old needle. <laughs> Why Oklahoma Republicans chose an eagle with wings spread instead of an elephant for their ballot symbol more than a century ago is unclear. Well, because it's kind of badass. And we don't have elephants in the U.S. A mild controversy arose in the 1990s when Ross Perot's Reform Party chose an eagle's head as its symbol. The only statutory restrictions on ballot symbols are that they not include the coat of arms or seal, of Oklahoma or of the United States or the representative flags thereof. Respective flags thereof. No one stood up in the rooster's defense at the convention, although the bull moose and the fighting kestrel, what is a fighting kestrel, had some support. Andrews acknowledged the switch is perhaps more than whimsical than anything else, but said that's okay. Some people said, why is this even on even the agenda? Even on the agenda. Yeah, but we need some of these lighter issues. She, I, I guess she's right on that. I guess. But I honestly thought the dem the donkey was straight across the board, every city, county, state. Yeah, I thought that was the official Democratic. I, I, I did too. I want to know what a fighting kestrel is. Yeah, well, you're looking up fighting kestrel. I'm looking up fighting kestrel. We're going to move on to more wonderful and weird. Okay. Oh, I think we both found the same article. All right. Oh. Because this was going to be a wonderful as well, so we'll talk about that later. Okay, it's kind of Actually, like a, 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 it's a raptor, it's a, it's a bird. Okay. So this, this is really cool. It's like a hawk. Uh, this is out of South Carolina. Police in South Carolina are praising an officer for her quick thinking when it came to taking a shooting and kidnapping suspect into custody. This was fantastic. The North Myrtle Beach Police Department said Officer Wallace was patrolling in the early morning hours last Sunday on Highway 17 when she saw a white Jeep go through a red light, WMBF reports. Police said Wallace pulled the Jeep over and saw a female driver and a male passenger. She noticed the woman appeared distressed. While the male passenger wasn't looking at the driver, the female silently mouthed, Help me. Repeatedly posted the department on his Facebook page. Thank God the cop was paying attention. Wallace noticed the driver's message. She got the man out of the Jeep and put him on the back seat of her patrol car. When she went back to the Jeep, police said the driver told Wallace that the passenger had just shot someone. Moments later, be on the lookout, a be on the lookout alert for the Jeep went across the police radio. The passenger, identified as 29 year old Collins Bates, was then arrested. How do you like that, Master Bates? <laughs> what did I say? A Horry County <laughs> police report stated that Bates shot someone in the Horry stomach. Horry County? <laughs> There's an yes. actual Horry County? <laughs> yep. H-O-R-R-Y, by the way. Police report stated that Bates shot someone in the stomach outside of the Waterway House, a Myrtle Beach area restaurant. He then allegedly forced the Jeep's driver to drive him away from the scene. Police say that thanks to Wallace, Bates was located within minutes. A gun underneath his seat in the Jeep matched the caliber of the case and was found at the shooting scene, according to the arrest warrants. Bates was allegedly carrying the gun unlawfully. Surprise, www. surprise, surprise. Surprise.com. Due to Officer Wallace proactively patrolling the streets of North Myrtle Beach, even to the last 30 minutes of her shift, a suspect in a shooting was arrested, um, the police department posted. Bates faces several charges, including attempted murder and kidnapping. Well, attempted murder, I guess the, the patient's going to live. He is being held at J. Rubin Long, Det sorry. <laughs> J. Rubin Long Detention Center under no bond. J. Rubin Long Detention Center. Yeah. Um, yep, 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 yep. So that was a good cop right there. Yeah, and, and by the way, kudos to the passenger for thinking for the, for the yeah. driver for quick thinking like that. Yeah, really, really good. 
and and n- knowing when to do it and how. Mm-hmm. Oh, Rudy. I'm getting our transgestor sound bite. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, kind, of, kind of gave away one kind of, of our... Kind of gave it away. That's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, Lord. All right. I, I, while you're doing that, I can go ahead and get the next article, okay. too. This is fascinating. <laughs> this is out of Bogota, Colombia. Four indigenous children survived an this Amazon... This is an update to a story that we did report on last ah. week. Remember, they weren't sure whether the Oh, that's kids, right. Well, they that's were right. found, they were they're rescued, found. and it's it's amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank so God for like that. I said we'd update as soon as we knew. Now we know, and we're updating. See how we are? Four indigenous children survived an Amazon plane crash that thrilled. That thrilled. These kids <clears> are brilliant. They killed three adults and then braved the jungle for 40 days before being found alive by Colombian soldiers, bringing a happy ending to a search and rescue saga that captivated a nation and forced the usually opposing military and indigenous people to work together. Cassava flower and some familiarity with the rainforest's fruits were key to the children's extraordinary survival in an area where snakes, mosquitoes, and other animals abound. The members of the Huitoto people, aged 13, 9, and 4 years and 11 months. Oh, wow. 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 Are expected to remain for a minimum of two weeks at a hospital receiving treatment after their rescue Friday. So I, I did just read an update that their mom actually lived for quite a while after the crash. Uh, and then they had to. Finally, that must have been so hard. Those poor babies. Oh, I can't even imagine what they're going to be going through for the rest of their lives. Family members, President Gustavo Petro, as well as government and military officials, met the children Saturday at the hospital in Bogota. Defense Minister Ivan Velasquez told told reporters the children were being rehydrated and cannot eat food yet. But in general, the condition of the children is acceptable, Velasquez said. They were traveling with their mother from the Amazonian village of Armacura to San Jose del Guaviare when the plane crashed in the early hours of May 1st. The Cessna single-engine propeller plane was carrying three adults and the four children when the pilot declared an emergency due to an engine failure. Seems like Cessnas just drop out of the sky every five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. The small aircraft fell off the radar a short time later and a search for survivors began. When the plane crashed, they took out of the wreckage a Farina, and with that, they survived. The children's uncle... Fidencio Valencia told amazing. reporters outside the hospital. Just For, amazing. Farina, or we call it farina here farina, in the States. Yeah. It's a cassava flour that people eat in the Amazon region. Um, sometimes used to make pasta and, and children's cereal here in the, in the States. After the farina ran out, they began to eat seeds, Valencia said. Timing was in the children's favor. Astrid Caceres head of the Colombian Institute of Family Welfare, said the youngsters were also able to be, eat fruit because the jungle was in harvest. An Air Force video released Friday showed a helicopter using lines to pull the youngsters up because it couldn't find in the dense rainforest where they were found. The military on Friday tweeted pictures showing a group of soldiers and volunteers posing with the children who were wrapped in thermal blankets. Mm-hmm. One of the soldiers held a bottle to the smallest child's lips. General Pedro Sanchez, who was in charge of the rescue effort, said that the children were found five kilometers away from the crash site in a small forest clearing. Wow. He said rescue teams had passed with 20 to 30, within 20 to 50 meters of where the children were found on a couple of occasions, but had missed them. The miners were already very weak, Sanchez said, and surely their strength was only enough to breathe or reach a small fruit to feed themselves or drink a drop of water in the jungle. Pietro called the children an example of survival and predicted their saga will remain in history. Two weeks after the crash on May 16th, a search team found the plane in a thick patch of the rainforest and recovered the bodies of the three adults on board, but the small children were nowhere to be found. Uh, Sensing that they could be alive, Colombia's army stepped up the hunt and threw 150 soldiers with dogs into the area where mist and thick foliage greatly limited visibility. Dozens of volunteers from indigenous tribes also joined the search. Soldiers on helicopters dropped boxes of food into the jungle, 
hoping that it would help sustain the children. Planes flying over the area fired flares to help search crews on the ground at night, and rescuers used speakers that blasted a message recorded by Sibling's grandmother telling them to stay in one place. The announcement of their rescue came shortly after President Gustavo Pietro signed a ceasefire with representatives of the National Liberation Army rebel group. In lines with his government's messaging highlighting his efforts to end internal conflicts, he stressed the joint work of the military and indigenous communities to find the children. Amazing. Amazing. I'm I'm just... Those kids are... I am so grateful to God for letting them live and giving them the ingenuity to do what they needed to do to stay alive. That's that's amazing. These kids are like so sad that they lost their mom, but my God, what they endured and what they, they did and worked together, took care of each other. I mean, these yeah. kids... Yeah, the, the oldest the oldest child was the one who really kept him going because she was the resourceful one and yeah. found the found the food and all of that. Well, so thank God they were children of the forest, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm blown away at the resourcefulness of these kids. Just absolutely amazing. Amazing. Well, speaking of amazing, I know last week we had a heck of a show. As dogs yeah. were barking and uh, maintenance guys were coming and going, and <laughs> I felt kind of stupid. I want to apologize again. I, th- I felt really stupid. Our show was not that. I, I mean, well, we had a we lot had of cool so things we were talking about. So many things going about, on at but... once, and and half of our house had no electricity. Um, it w- it just really, really got <laughs> crazy. But. Hardship inspires creativity. And yeah. Give me two seconds, though, because I'm trying to save something and everything's going in the wrong direction. So stall, Mona, stall. Stall. Well, well we tell, them, tell them about your noggin and your new hairdo. Oh, yeah. I think I mentioned this in passing last last week, but um, we're going to be updating the uh, our logo and updating our um, pictures of me, representatives of me, because I finally decided that my hair was no longer going to keep up with my head. So, um, <laughs> yeah, he, he's no longer I finally a four head, a five in. head, a six head, a yeah, seven no, head. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just a head. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I went and got a buzz cut. I am getting one of those, it's it's a Norelco shaver, but it's got five heads and it's literally for shaving your head. Really? You're yeah. You do it yourself? Mm-hmm. Well, I thought you liked your guy. I do like my guy, and I may go back to my guy, my guy, but, you know, I'm just, I'm not doing it immediately. It's something I'm eventually going to get. I mean, he does a really good job, and he trims up the, the muttons. All right, okay, I'll, I'll keep going. Yeah, and men man. deserve to be spoiled now and then. Yeah, and then. I do. But anyway, I may or may not get the shaver, but the point is, if you see few photos of me in the future or any <laughs> other updated representations He's of me. He's very shiny. I'm very shiny. Not exactly Kojak yet, but I might as well be. Well, Fortunately, only, the one photo I've posted the, uh, of myself with my new hair, or my new head, I should say, have gotten mostly positive responses. Um, Melanie's... Got a, Melanie's got a nice head. It's nice and round yeah. and, and not pointy or yeah. pinky looking. Well, my, my, my wife's stepdad posted on Facebook that I rocked the dome, and I said, hey, I learned from the best. Yeah, that's true. Is. Sam had shoulder length hair when yeah, he, was, he married he was, into my family. And now he's just like me, <laughs> or I'm just yeah. like him actually, because he he pioneered it. I'm just following. He, pi- he pioneered the, the the bald head. Well, you guys are the same age, you roughly. And, you and my dad. We know. <laughs> Believe me, anybody who's listened to at least one episode of this show knows <laughs> I'm old enough to be your stepdad, who's six years older than her. I don't get it. Actually, I kind of do. He's a great guy. Yeah, but he's a good guy. Anyway. He good guy. Yeah, he good guy. Um, oh, by the way, something Melanie usually says, but I'm going to say it this week. Whatever you're doing right now, drop everything. Did you get the drop? Okay. Missed you this time. Oh, thank God, but that poor dog. Anyway, um... Come to our our um, 
our website where you can check out archives of our show, pick up some exciting new merchandise, support our show financially. I think we still have the beer fund up. I don't know if we still call it that. No, we don't call it the beer fund. Oh, well, anyway, because I don't drink that much beer anymore anyway. Mm -hmm. But the... um, Support us, buy our crap. Yeah, buy our crap, support us, and uh, let us know how you feel about the show. Keep kibble in our bowls. (laughs) Yeah, um, help us feed the cats because they're... they're, um, they mutiny if they're... Uh, yeah, they mutiny and they have a, have a huge appetite. They got spoiled today, though. They got tuna juice. Yeah, oh, yes, they did. Melanie makes divine tuna salad. Aww. So it's like the absolute... And and I love it, and of course the cats love I it because... I didn't put any celery uh, or anything in it. It was just like... Yes, yeah, celery is celery's nothing more than a than a transport for peanut butter and <laughs> cream cheese. I mean, I, I don't I know. I that. Brie. I like brie on it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. brie. Brie works on it. So anyway, um, please come to our... If you like our show, tell people. And by the yes. way... Like, share, subscribe. Do all the things. Thumbs we have up. 97 some, stars. We have some amazing guests coming up. We and do. I, uh, before I say anything about them, I do want to say that we have guests on. Now, we have a certain political bent, and sometimes we really rant about it for ages, and other shows we don't. Um, if you want to be a guest on our show, please don't feel intimidated or whatever if you oh, have yeah. different beliefs than ours. We have entire hours. interviews where politics doesn't even come up. In fact, we yeah. have one We have up one coming up in a few weeks an and then artist. one coming up next week that I think and is going to be And next week for our, our uh, Father's Day special, and that will be um, our anniversary, too, because our very first show was on Father's Day. Oh, it was, wasn't it? It was in 20... Well, you don't remember. think Max is going to try to do anything crazy this well, time We got him a kennel, so we, we've told him in no uncertain mm, terms. I'm going to get a padlock. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> just to idea. make sure. Just to make, I, I changed I'm, all the passwords. You know, okay. He, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Um, but we are going to have... A guest next week who I absolutely loved interviewing. I read his book um, through Fields and Fire. It's a personal journey story. A uh, guy who was a fellow Marine who fought during Operation Desert Shield. Brave man, but also a very gentle soul, and you know has gone gone through a lot. And he is now a a minister. And he's got a lot to talk about. So that's going to be our part of our and Father's Day special father broadcast. Too, so yeah, I he's a fantastic he, he, father. The perfect guest for Father's yeah. Day. So, yes, in uh, 2017, Father's Day was our very first show. So we'll have to do something to acknowledge that. 17, but, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that'll be seven years we've been doing this. Yipe. Yeah. Seven years. Yeah. One year for each of our listeners. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So nice to have an audience we, in. in we, chat. we we do <laughs> we do have lots of people who listen in live, but more, you know, I can understand Sunday nights kind of odd. I mean, there's some kind of a award show where actors are going to stand up and start screaming political crap tonight. So oh, is that tonight? Yeah, I didn't pay attention to that anymore. I mean, it's it's not the movie one. I think it's the stage one. Oh, but anyway. Um, I'm an actor. I should, you know, I should be into this, but I'm not anymore. I'm just done You're with just that. A bunch of sick of pamps. It, it's fine. Patting it's themselves fine. on the back. Whatever. Sickos. But anyway, so where was I going with this? But anyway, pe- some people are doing things on Sunday nights, so they listen to us on some podcast. Are doing Network. things on Sunday nights, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we love you all. If you uh, are listening after the fact, we appreciate you. But any time. Whether you're listening live or not, please contact us through our website and let us know what you think. Uh, are there right. some things well, you're you like not better than others? This, Jim, what? But um, we are at the top of the hour. That went by so fast, and we have a lot more things to talk about. Um, I, we've got some stories and nice things that just have to be shared. <laughs> they, they'll curl your hair if you had any like that used to. Oh, Lordy. Yeah. Um, but we did tease about the update to our electrical woes from last week. So here you go, ladies and gentlemen. We played an oldie but a goodie, our very first episode of Slumlord University. And um, please keep in mind, 
all of these interactions are based on a true story. Like, this actually happened to us. All right, guys. Today we're going to learn how to drag out an electrical work order long enough that the tenant gives up so you'll never have to actually learn how to do any electrical work. Electricity is tricky because it's the one thing renters won't try to fix themselves. So they'll keep bugging the office until they feel like you're doing something. It's a universal mandate that electrical emergencies only arise after midnight on a Friday or Saturday. So your job is to stall until Tuesday when the real electrician's rates go down. But what if it really is an emergency that can't wait? Don't give in to their namsy pamsy cries of my air conditioning or my medical equipment. Everyone knows that's just their way of trying to bully you into doing your job. Oh, they'll whine and cry and threaten legal action, but don't you fall for it. You're better than that, Cletus. Now the first thing you gotta do is inform them that they are your bottom priority. I don't care if it's 120 degrees out and they have no power at all. There's always a more pressing emergency. Lester, you got an A in Work Orders 101. What's the go-to cover? Busted pipe. An extra Bud Light for you tonight, Lester. That's right. Even if you only have two properties, at least one of them can have a busted pipe at any given moment. Now, even with the perfect alibi, you don't want the tenant getting any fancy ideas like calling your boss again. So at some point, you gotta go over there and take a look-see. They recognize your truck, so pulling up outside will give them some hope. Just park yourself there and idle while you get all your paperwork done. Have yourself a snack or a nap or whatever you like. I mean, you're getting overtime, am I right? Just don't overdo it or one of them will build up the courage to come out and talk to you. That's the last thing you want. If you see them peek out the window or move to the door, that's your cue. Now, fellas, write this down. Do not. I repeat. Do not bring your toolbox or any other paraphernalia on the first go-round. When you knock on that door, you got to have nothing on hand. This is important. You make the renter show you the problem, and then you tell them you got to go back to your truck to get your flashlight. Then pretend to get another call. This will buy you at least an hour. Next, you got to get them to show you where the fuse box is. What if they don't know? Excellent question, Clyde. This will buy you another hour while you pretend to look for it. You can stretch it out to two hours if you pretend to get another call. Five hours if that call is another busted pipe. You see what I'm doing here? If you're really lucky, at some point, they might just give up and go to bed. Now, I don't want to get your hopes up because this is next-level professionalism that takes years to practice and hone. But one time, I actually got them to rent a hotel room for the night. Yeah, I was in rare form that day. Keep in mind, this is all before you even so much as look at the issue. Now, after you stalled sufficiently, you will have to take a look at it. You got your flashlight, but remember, that's it. No tools. Not yet. They know that you know where the breaker box is, so that's your first move. Flip them all on and off. Every single one of them, even if they're labeled and you can clearly see they ain't the problem. The renter doesn't know that. The more lights you can turn on and off, the more it'll look like you're trying to do something. Okay, now you start getting specific. Ask them what room the problem's in. Take your flashlight and ask if it's a particular outlet or the whole room. If they're not sure, have them unplug everything in the room. I mean everything. If they have to move furniture around, all the better. That'll give you time for another fake phone call in your truck. Remember... The busier you look, the more guilty they'll feel for bothering you. When they're done, try the breaker again. Then have them turn on the overhead light. If it don't stay on, you got lucky and can blame the fuse itself. Tell them you'll be calling a specialist in as soon as things open back up, and you'll let them know when to expect the other guy tomorrow. Wrap it up and head home. Make sure you log your time. If the overhead does stay on, it ain't the problem, and now you're stuck. Don't panic, though, because every step I'm about to give you opens an opportunity to get out of there. 
have them turn the overhead off and then plug a lamp or something into one of the outlets. Yes, Joey? Uh, why would you have them turn off the overhead if it's working okay? Come on, Joey, you ain't new here. Usually they won't have anything handy, and having to use a flashlight to find it will slow them down. So that'll buy you time for a smoke break. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. You bet your bippy it does. Once they find something to plug in, plug the thing in and turn it on. If it stays on, turn it off and plug it into the next receptacle. And by next, I don't mean the next outlet in the room. I mean the next receptacle on the same outlet. But ain't the receptacles on an outlet all on the same circuit? Lenny, I know that, and you know that, but the dadgum tenants don't know that. Do you want to cut your overtime in half? Pay attention, son. Sorry, Prof, you're right. Any other brain surgeons want to speak up? No? Okay. Now, continue doing this to all the outlets, even if you find the problem. You can repeat this at least twice. Just say you got to double check. Once you've nailed down the culprit, that's when you really get to look like you're doing your job. Remember, every time you go out to the truck and back, they think you're doing something. This time you get your voltmeter and start beeping around the outlet. They don't know what the thing does. Heck, I don't know what the thing does. So if they ask, just make something up like you found a disturbance in the flux force. Tell them it'll take some special supplies that you got to get at the hardware store, which ain't open, and the job will take a full day's work. So that buys you all the rest of the time you need until you can call the real electrician, and then he can start the whole process over again. All right, boys, today's lesson was a long one. Smoke them if you got them. Yeah, I get it. Your parents were jerks and you're traumatized. But that doesn't mean you should use your lousy childhood as an excuse to be a lousy adult. Stop being such a whiner and get past your past already. Bye, get over it and get started. The book by Melanie Hope that will get you out of your self-imposed failure and on the road to greatness. Available in paperback, Kindle, and Nook. Do you feel trapped in your body, mind, or spirit? Are you one of countless Americans wanting to identify as someone or something else outside of your current identity? We can help. At Crap It All One Credit, we have helped thousands of people with their identities. We can take your old one and hand it over to hackers, leaving you free to be that unicorn or attack helicopter you've always known you were. Let Crap It All One's lack of security enable you with yours. We want to identify as your credit card of choice. Call us or visit our website today. Crap it all one, a division of Sucker Bank, LLC. Terms and conditions apply. Extension of credit is not guaranteed, even though we send people thousands and thousands of ads in the mail implying that it is. Applying for credit will affect your credit score. Never mind that may affect the stuff that we always print on the applications because it's not true. Just like Jeffrey Epstein hanging himself. Don't expect a high credit line or low APR just because you think you deserve it. We haven't stayed in business for decades by being stupid with our money. That's your thing. This offer extended only to dummies in the United States and its territories. Have a nice day. Later. Listen up. Do you feel like you can't get a dang thing done because of all the namsy pamsy crybabies that want you to coddle their creativity? When you give orders, are you met with vacant stares only rivaled by a cocker spaniel? It's not them. It's you. You need to shape up or they'll ship you out. Read the Sniper's Guide to Leadership and you will become a more effective leader, communicator, and motivator. Forget smart goals and learn swift goals. Get the Sniper's Guide to Leadership in paperback, Kindle, and Nook. Today! I can't believe how much prices have shot up. I can barely keep up with my bills and groceries. And the landlord just told me he has to raise my rent so he can pay his bills. What a mess. I bet you're sorry you voted for old Joe now, aren't you? What are you talking about? He's doing a great job. 
This isn't his fault. Besides, he made gas prices go down. But you just contradicted yourself. If he didn't cause the prices to go up, how can you give him credit for bringing them down? He's doing a great job. His approval rating is through the roof. Through what roof? No one likes him. It doesn't matter if no one likes him because everyone likes him. In spite of every single fact right in her face, she still spouts nonsense with such conviction. How does she do it? That's easy. Your friend uses Deniatol, the newest medication from CCW Labs. Deniatol allows you to have truly independent thoughts without the pressure of using logic, compassion, or decency. With Deniatol, you can live in your own peaceful bubble, enjoying true creativity. Let's see another example of how Deniatol can enhance your life. Joe, I wanted to talk to you about your job performance. Yeah, what about it? According to the numbers, your performance has been slipping steadily over the last three months. I'm going to have to give you a verbal warning. I'm not slipping. You're full of it. Okay. Look, Joe, here are the numbers. This is proof that you're not doing as well as you had been. You went from a 90% success rate to 85 and then 72. Now look, Joe, you've been here a long time and I really want to help. Let's work together to fix this, all right? There ain't nothing to fix. You're discriminating against me. I'm doing nothing of the sort. Everyone here is being held to the same standards. Standards are racist. But how can we be accountable without standards? Accountability is racist. What are you talking about? You're just using your position to discriminate against me. Discriminate? Joe, we're both Hispanic. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go to HR and report you for using racist numbers against me. Now numbers are racist? Oh, the hell with it. Just get back to work and try to do better this month, all right? Asking me to improve is... Please just go, all right? All right. Thanks, Deny It All. Deny It All. For the life you choose. Only from CCW Labs. Use only as directed. Deny it all should be taken by prescription only unless the doctor tells you that you can't have it, in which case you should either scream and cry and beg until they give in or go to a border town where someone will just hand it to you through the fence. Do not take with alcohol, cola, juice, water, milk, coffee, root beer, tea, grape beverages, ginger ale, Dr. Pepper, coconut milk, lemonade, or susperilalalalalalala. Side effects may include blurred vision, slurred speech, stroke, heart attack, diabetes, or lycanthropy. Avoid using heavy machinery, baseball bats, dog toys, guitars, wheelbarrows, horseshoes, or submarines. Deny it all is a registered trademark of CCW Labs and you are not allowed to use it unless you hit like, share, subscribe, and send lots and lots and lots of money to counterculturewise.com We here at Burger Fling strive to be the wokiest woke company that ever woke in the West. Our pandering to millennials knows no bounds. From satis fries and black cheese to promising free food for women who get knocked up by soccer players, we bend over every which way but backwards to lure those knobheads in. And this is the year that we are shifting into hyperdrive. As if offering vegan burgers weren't enough, we had to pound the crap out of that long debunked dead horse known as the pink tax. Our chick fries ad pretended to offer the same food in a pink box at twice the price because, you know, that's exactly how it works with razors. What better way to propagate propaganda than through a fast food restaurant ad? Last month, we celebrated the launch of our series of unhappy meals. Who wants to get a burger and fries and feel good about themselves? Muck, no one! We are so woke that we do not comprehend the idea that you are supposed to buy a meal to make yourself feel better. No, here at Burger Fling, we offer a set of five perfectly normal emotions so that you can feel more suicidal, snarky, shitty, spastic, or just plain meh. Have it your way or the highway and screw anyone who gets in the way of your moody ass.
Just last week, we used our Twatter account to engage in guerrilla politics by reminding everyone our milkless milkshakes make excellent projectiles. If you can't shoot, firebomb, or in the UK, spoon your opponent, publicly humiliate them with hilariously violent antics. Make sure you're in front of the cameras or it doesn't count. Psst. Hey, UK, we recommend our sulfuric smoothie flavor or in a pinch, the Chicago-style bleach vanilla bomb. Yummy! Today we offered our most woke doodle woke wokiest wonky woke woke yet! We're going to pay off your student loans. Listen up, millennials. All you have to do is download our app, enter all of your personal information, including the amount you owe and your checking account number, drop some coins for some of our yummy mystery meatless burgers, and then sit back and wait. We are going to randomly give away as much as five hundred dollars. Sure, it's not enough to buy a single textbook, and it won't help a single student make even a single payment on their loans, but we are single-handedly making the rounds of every news outlet. And isn't that what being woke is all about? Hey everybody, this is Fritzina Fluffy Bottom. Did you know that we have a subscribe star? We do! There are lots of fabulous extra things on there that you can't get anywhere else, like outtakes, new books, and extra videos. And you can sign up for as little as one dollar. Our entire show is funded by you, our loyal viewers. Please make sure you sign up today so that mommy and daddy can get me shiny new bells for my collar, extra feathery toys, yummy crumbly cat food bowls made just for kitty cats, more cow pillows for my couch, name brand albacore tuna, my own beef <laughs> Now, see, that's why we can't have nice things. Got a short and sweet one today, but lots to say on it. There you go. This will be interesting. Um, I do have a question that I'll give at the end. It's an important question. Needs to be asked. Okay. <laughs> New York City Mayor Eric Adams, you know, the vegan who eats fish, Signed legislation on Friday that will ban discrimination based on body size by adding weight and height to the list of protected categories such as race, sex, and religion. We all deserve the same access to employment, housing, and public accommodation regardless of our appearance, and it shouldn't matter how tall you are or how much you weigh, said the mayor, who joined other elected officials as well as fat acceptance advocates at a city hall bill signing ceremony. Adams, the Democrat who published a book about reversing his diabetes through a plant-based diet, said the ordinance will help level the playing field for all New Yorkers, create more inclusive workplaces and living environments, and protect against discrimination. And it goes on to talk about exemptions, blarty blarty, um, cases which an individual's higher weight could prevent them from performing essential functions or jobs. Um, some business leaders expo- expressed opposition Uh, arguing that compliance could become an onerous burden. So here's my question. Yeah. What about roller coasters? I think they're talking more about employment uh, or um, other opportunities like that, not riding a roller coaster. I don't. You must be this tall to enter. (laughs) You know, I mean, if they want to shut the amusement park down, that'd be a good way to do it. You know, clear it off to make room for some development or something. I guess that's, they could work so it that way. He um, says discrimination against people based on their body size is wrong and, and is something that we can change. Well, how can you prove that? How could I prove that I didn't get hired for a position because I'm a cow? And, and I say this as a fatty myself. Right. I I had to when I was working in the corporate world, go to interviews as a large woman and and get the looks and and sometimes get the snide remarks and sometimes get the uncomfortable... So it's always women. Men didn't really seem to care. No. It's always... When women no. interviewed me, my size made them uncomfortable. It's really funny. And I had to compensate for that by just being freaking capable, being good at what I did. But I, I think I've shared this before. I got a job as an accountant at a 
medium-sized company. And my first day on the job, and this is when I was even bigger than I am now, my boss, who I shared an office with, came up to me and let me know that she had informed everybody in the company about me so that they could get it out of their system. So, virtue signaling before it became a fad. Well, and why did she feel the need to tell me that? Yeah, sometimes something like, hello, is the best left aboard. Let me humiliate you yeah. publicly on your very first day. That didn't last, did it? I was there for four years. Oh, that's not bad. I was good at what I did. I was very good at what I did. And that's the thing. I mean, even when I was a professional speaker and then bouncing around on stages, even, you know, as a big, big girl, I, I got sometimes I in, you know, different states, depending on where I was, mm-hmm. people would say snarky things. I, I got feedback um, one time that somebody mentioned my size and said, nobody wants to see that. Nothing about whether they learned anything. Nothing about no, that, that you know, like how well the, I did. Just nobody wants to see that. Yeah, that, that sounds like one of those people who goes online to rate something on Amazon saying, I'll bet this would be great. And giving it a rating based on that. Or <laughs> that doesn't sound right to me. Never yeah. having looked at, seen, right. touched, or used the product. Yeah. You know, there's, and you know, so, so no, people should not useless. be discriminated based on that. But people <clears throat> also should not be celebrated based on that. Right. And and that's the thing we we've gone from a society where like we want free and fair access to no, you have to bow down to my whims and celebrate my mental illness or celebrate my my life choices. It's like no, I don't have to celebrate doodly squat. I. Maybe I'm weird, but I know the difference between someone who's fat because they eat enormous amounts of food and don't exercise versus someone who's fat despite the fact that they don't eat enormous amounts of food and they do exercise. And it's frustrating because nobody separates the two. I mean, you you wonder how much Lizzo has to eat to maintain her body size because she's pretty active. Yeah. And... You know, do, does she have a... I don't know. All I know is you, you see how much I eat. <laughs> you would starve. It's not much. You would starve on how much, much I eat. You end right. up eating most of my food because I can't finish it. And right. yet... Well, it's glands, but seriously. It's not anything. I don't know. That's not what doctors say. Well... Okay, I mean, I'm not going to argue with doctors. But so. yeah, um, Nick in chat has a really good point. How would someone 800 pounds that wants to be a firefighter get the job at that weight and have the job of running up 100 stairs? Well, I think that's one of the exemptions. That would be one of the exemptions, I'm pretty sure. I mean, you do have to be physically fit to be a firefighter. That being said, with both the military and public service jobs, because, you know, these women that are 90 pounds soaking wet think that they should be firefighters, they lowered the standards. These women can't even meet the basic, basic standards. So rather than say, okay, you're not eligible for the job, they lower the bar. And I don't think, I don't, if if I were in a burning building, I wouldn't want some little girl, you know, I know she can't help me. I know she can't lift me. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel safe. And it's not racist or sexist. It's just, you're not fit for the job. You're just not, you know? I mean, I don't understand why we have to play this game anymore. Oh, it's just, there's two reasons. To raise tax revenue and to make themselves look good. Or raise raise I mean, funds by penalties or what have if you. If you're driving the truck or you're piloting the airplane or whatever, those things don't require specific strengths or, or whatever, you know, just mm-hmm. skill. But if we're talking, you know, picking up a a 40 pound axe and and trekking 200 pounds of 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 equipment up up a stairwell some little girl ain't going to ain't going to cut it right and lowering the standards just puts people in danger absolutely 
real danger in real time. No. <laughs> Chad says, well, I think there should be more blind EMTs. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> I, now, love these, now. I love our politically incorrect yes. guests and friends well, of the show. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, this is a story from our current home state. In February 2018, Texas Department of Transportation Commissioner Victor Vandergriff resigned from his governor-appointed position, telling the public that it was time for new blood. Instead of stopping his payments, the state continued to cut him a monthly paycheck, 62 paychecks in fact, totaling nearly 92000 plus benefits over the next five years. Holy crap. The state took steps to stop nice the payments. Nice work if you can get it. Jeez. Now there's a technicality that allowed him to get it and free and clear. I want this job. <laughs> this, you, we live in Texas. Now you can apply for it or yeah. run for it or whatever. The state took steps to stop the payments in March after the Austin American statesman asked why Vandergriff was still getting paid. The position paid $16,300 annually to work part-time helping oversee the state agency in charge of Texas roads and highways. Vandergriff's a Abrupt exit came in 2018. Yeah, that, that's not. I mean, 16, it, it came a month after the Texas Tribune reported that Vandergriff had re- performed work as a private lobbyist during trips oh. to Austin. Whoa, oh, paid for by the DOT. Vandergriff returned, or Vandergrifter returned some of the <laughs> money in the state. Mister Transportation. That's what a news release called him. Got a new job in June 2020 as the executive director of the Tarrant Regional Transportation Coalition a public-private partnership that champions innovative mobility and infrastructure solutions for our public or private? You can't be both. What do you mean? A public-private partnership? No, it's, it's, a, it? it's a partnership between government and businesses, too. That, that, that happens all the time. Hmm. Um, but payments totaling 91796 continued flowing into Vandergriff's bank account, more than $1,300 a month, plus at least $80 monthly in longevity pay, longevity according to the Texas pay? Comptroller's Office, even though he never attended another commission meeting after his resignation, records show. The payments also continued for three years after Vandergriff's term expired in 2019. Oh, for crying out loud. Who are because the he remained. Uh, there, there's reasons. Um, let's see. Because he remained on the books as a state employee, Vandergriff also qualified for additional years of state service to bolster his pension and was eligible for Texas-funded medical benefits. A spokesperson Golly, for the nice Employee Retirement can. System said she could not discuss whether or not Vandergriff received any such benefits, citing confidentiality. In other words, he did. Uh, let's see. V- Vandergriff, I'm, I'm skipping some parts of it. Because it's just too long. He t- initially told the states... And of course, he- for those parts that we skipped, if you want to read more, you can always go to counterculturewise.com, where we post all of our links archived, of course. So if ever you want to peruse our sources, you're more than welcome to find them there. See, and here's, here's, the, uh, here's the loophole. Andrew Mahaleris, a spokesman for Governor Abbott, said in a statement the Texas Constitution provides the state officers, such as the TXDOT commissioners, serve as holdovers until the replacements are appointed and qualify for office, despite term expiration or stepping down for that role. In other words, nobody stepped up to take over, so he just he got the money. It's in the state constitution. It's free, Holy legal, and above board. Stupid, that. but legal and above board. He doesn't have to pay it back. There's no reason to. Well, I hope we fix that. I guess they're working on it. Okay, well, I guess he didn't do anything wrong, but the state certainly did. I'm sure about my taxes are going to pay for some guy doing nothing. Oh, wait, all my taxes go for somebody doing nothing. (laughs) That's pretty much the definition of taxes. Extort money for people who do nothing. Well, we got some fun things to get into, so here we go. is not Bubba Waters. It is no longer 2020. But this is your new Abnormal. And our chief, I was proud to have ended the ban on transgender Americans, transgender Americans serving in the United States military. 
Everything is in context. My mother used to, she would give us a hard time sometimes and she would say to us, I don't know what's wrong with you young people. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. They tell me, be careful not to predict things that you don't know for certain what's going to happen because then you'll be held accountable. I get that. But let me tell you what I think based on all that I've learned and all that I've studied and all that I think that I know. You can't yell, crowd, you can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater. We call it freedom of speech. So the best way to get something done, if you... If it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway. Vagina. <laughs> that still cracks me up. That still cracks me up every time. Every time. <laughs> so, yeah, this. Uh, Isn't it funny how much vagina sounds like China? <laughs> he said it that way on purpose. Yeah. Virtually everything he does, he thinks through first. I mean, yeah. not everything, but... They don't like to admit it, but... Yeah, yeah. so... So... You heard it here, folks. Here at, the, here at, cel- at the Counterculture Wise, we celebrate transgender Americans. <laughs> oh, my That's God. That's so fitting with the clown makeup and everything. Yeah. It's just so yeah. fitting. So I think from now on, we're going to use that term, transgender, when we yes. talk about... Trans people. I like trans trender, but trans gesture is much better. And, and since trans trender is okay too. Since the resident of the White House made up the term, I, th- I think it's brilliant. So. Yeah, we have, we have to respect his his uh, vocabulary. I mean, he's the president after all. So, you want to take it? You want me to take it? I want you to take it. You're, you're the one who was excited to talk about it. Alrighty then. Okay. Joe Biden held a Pride Month 2023 event on the White House lawn Saturday adorned with rainbow motifs and pride flags. By the way, it is repugnant that the pedo pride nonsense flag is up there between front and center taking the place of our country's flag, of our nation's flag. I find that repugnant. Pugnant. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, Joe, here are some of the bravest and most inspiring people I've ever known. And I've not alone a lot of good folks, Biden told the crowd. You set an example for the nation, and quite frankly, for the world. What kind of an example, You're Joe? Just- shouting who you bang. That's not an example. You're just a pervert. Biden claimed he'd seen more courage on this lawn than at any time I've seen in the present pa- recent past. I mean, never mind police or firefighters or military people. People who or, actually contribute to society. Yeah, or, you know, business people or whatever. You know, we all move forward. We move together with your joy, with your pride lighting the way, he continued. What so today... Weren't were you... The whole thing was overborn this way. Well, I'm not proud of being born with red hair or being born with fat cells, so why are you proud about who it is you prefer to bang? That I don't get it. I don't know. So today, let us proudly remember who we are, the United States of America. We already knew that. Biden accidentally came up with a no, new colloquialism for LGBTQ folk, transgesters. Biden also went on a, an absurd rant falsely claiming gay Americans across the U.S. are being thrown out of restaurants for their sexual identity. Yeah, that happens. When a person can be married in the morning and thrown out of a restaurant for being gay in the afternoon, something is still very wrong in America. The now, puppet president, the is this is it? obviously a, a, a biased a biased article. That's okay, the next the one biased the other one. The president unveiled so. supporting, uh, funding to support address the LGBTQ homelessness. What in the... Dude, you popped way too many pills back in the hippie days, son. Apparently the Biden regime... Okay, and this is the part that really set Melanie off. Apparently the Biden regime even violated U.S. flag code when they prominently displayed the woke progress pride flag flanked by two American flags on the White House. Okay. 
U.S. flag code, and you know, I'm a Marine, I had to learn this way back when. U.S. flag code decrees that the American flag must always be in the dominant, not subservient position. Joe Biden defaced the American flag by flanking the alphabet cult flag at the White House today. So the rainbow flag's in the middle, where the American flag should be, and it's not just and the at the normal, same level. It's not just the normal grooming rainbow mafia flag. It's the one that has the pink and blue pedo stripes. Hmm. It's it's the Nambla version. I mean, these yeah. people are twisted. The enemy is inside the castle walls, says the um, the um, the what? Says the Twitter, the tweet. Sorry, not one. <laughs> And then another one, Ben Shapiro says, Not one American soldier fought and bled for this flag. Not one American taxpayer paid taxes to the government of this flag. Not one law has been passed under a government elected under, under, under this flag. The ideological coup is complete. Whatever. These people. So anyway, I fully support the transgender movement. And, and I, want, I, I just want you to know that at some point, I'll be showing up wearing my jester's hat and white makeup, and <laughs> you know, we'll just we'll just do the thing. You look just like the the nuns of perpetual chicken shit because they won't oh, do the, it for the, Muslims. Oh, the sisters of perpetual whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah you uh, do. do I Muslim. used to find them amusing do, when, do I, Jews. Like, when I was when I was younger. Go ahead, I dare you. Go go dress up as a tranny Muslim. I dare you, you chicken sh- shuzzle. We're not. We're not Shizzle. doing that show anymore. Shizzle. We're not Shizzle. doing that in the show anymore. I dare you. It's like you can. Christians let you get away with it. First of all, because we don't have hangups, we can worship our God without your approval, and we don't need to beat it into other people because our faith is strong enough. It can be questioned, unlike other faiths. But to sit there and say it's okay to deface. Our religion, and it's it's okay to to act like that when you're too chicken hearted. You're too you don't even have. Uh, I don't want to get into a ginger snaps, but my God, you absolute lily livered. <laughs> I don't even like calling them chickens because chickens are smaller and braver than that. And chickens you, give you eggs. There is that. Just anyway, the, the just cowardly, cowardly. You pretending like you have something to contribute. You don't. You're cowards. You're picking on people that you know won't push back. And and you're defacing and defaming and belittling people's faith, but you're too cowardly to do it for all faiths. I dare you. To make fun of Muslims. Go for it. I dare you to make fun of, of Jews. They won't. They won't. They declared war on Christianity because they knew that Christians are better and won't bomb them, take them down, destroy them, blah, blah, blah. Because we're better than that. And they're cowards. So they pick on the people, you know, the the turn-the-other-cheek people, because they're so cowardly and so insecure, they can't actually take a stand on anything. Wait, wait, wait till they find out that all these people, you know, they're, they're, they're bowing to are, oppose them as well. Yeah. You know, they're, they're in for a big surprise. So, next story is also a transgester. A dude wins bicycle race. Blather, rinse, repeat. A trans-identified male has once again taken first place in the women's category oh, of... North- I'm sorry Vindicia? to interrupt. I, I don't like to interrupt. This is from a feminist website. Yes. Just want to point that out. Go ahead. Yeah, because it's about dang time that feminists started standing up for this. Mm-hmm. It's, it's... Why are we... I don't agree with feminists on a lot of things. But why are... The very people who say that they're fighting for women's rights, allowing women to be erased. 
It's time they stood up. Grow a set of boobs, ladies, and stand up to these guys. So a dude, trans-identified male, has once again... Trans-identified male? Okay. I'm, I'm totally confused which is which now. Has once again taken first place in the women's category of a North Carolina cycling tour, adding to his expansive list of victories against female cyclists. Ladies, when a man pulls up next to you at a sporting event and he thinks he needs to compete against you, walk off the field. Don't play the game. Let him run, cycle, javelin, whatever, all by his little self. Take yourself away from the situation, and this nonsense will end. But these women who allow this... It only needs to happen once or twice. Yeah, these women who allow this and support this, you are the ones erasing us. You are the ones who are sitting back and letting these men... I mean, only men could, you know... Feminists whine and cry about the patriarchy and then bow down to it like little bitches the minute some man comes in and says, yeah, oh, I'm a woman now. Pardon my French, but come on. I mean, come on. When a dude shows up on your track, at your, your bicycle race, at your weight, weightlifting competition, when a dude shows up who is so insecure who is so cowardly that he has to take on women because he can't compete in his own world. Walk away. Leave the room. Let him go on his little expose all by himself. And eventually this will stop. But as long as you, you know, we were talking about the uh, puppy the other day. She has this thing where she screams and cries and has a fit when we leave the room and she needs to get over it. Every time we give her attention, it's like hitting the reset button. Every time we acknowledge her in any way, she's going to get louder and shriller and worse because she's getting attention, even if it's negative. They don't care. They just want attention. You have got to ignore these people. You've got to ignore them because it's not going to stop until you do. And yeah, we want to compete as women. We want to be out there winning our trophies and our prizes, and we deserve to. But when these men, these effeminate, bad at what they do, can't compete in their own division, men try to take over our spaces, walk away. Make your own space. Do not let these men replace us. You've got to stand up for yourselves, ladies. You've got to. Every time you let a man pretend he's a woman and win scholarships, trophies, money because you didn't have the guts to stand up and say no, you're getting exactly what you deserve. You're not going to be able to get jobs. You're not going to be able to get scholarships. You're not going to be able to do any of the thing that we have fought so hard for. If you want equality, You've got to stop these men from taking it away from you. They are erasing you. So it's about dang time that some feminists are standing up to these guys. The Belgian waffle ride? Yes. North Carolina? I'm hungry. I want waffles now. I want now. waffles now. How do you not want waffles? Took place today in Hendersonville and participating in the women's division was a biological man named Austin Killips. Austin Coward Killips. I bet he couldn't even place 97th in the men's division, and that's why he's coming into the women's. Killips, 27, identifies as a woman and has been competing in women's cycling events since 2022. During the 137-mile race today, Killips quickly took the lead in the female division because he's a man, as demonstrated by highlights offered by uh, blah, blah, blah. Race began, sees first place, leading, blah, blah, because he's a man and has bigger muscles. And yes, there are differences between women and men. At the 13-mile mark, Killips was confirmed as having been in first place with two female athletes maintaining their second and third spots, respectively. During miles 55 through 59, Killips on women and men were grouped together with no concrete placing and shortly after... And for a brief period of time, Orweller managed to claim the first place position. But on 
mile 108, Killips had effortlessly, effortlessly slipped back into first place and had begun to place significant distance between himself and the female riders. Nearing the finish line, Killips had a five-minute head on his competitors. These women should not have stood on the podium with him. He's a cheater. He's cheating. He cheated women out of their rightful place. He's cheating because he's not a good enough athlete to compete in his own league. And ladies, do not step on the podium with these men who are seeking to replace you, belittle you. Don't do it. Just stop doing it. They'll go away. Well, there, there's more to it. He's actually committed acts of violence against women. Oh, goody. Mm. Uh, this is not the first time Caleb says I didn't get this far, so it must be buried. It's, no, it's two, two down from that. Two down from what? From what you just said. Two paragraphs da, da, down from da, what you just da, said. Da, 108, rolling, da, da. Huge win. Starts with distibur- disturbingly. That was the first Disturbingly. Killips had previously been accused of attempting to push female cyclist Hannah Arneson off the racing course at the UCI Soccer Cross National Championships in December of 2022. One Twitter user shared a video of the incident that shows Killips trying to put Arneson into the tape. The user said it was one of at least three such attempts to push her off course, but the only one recorded on video and had said Killips should have been disqualified for that move alone. No, he should have been disqualified because he's a man. He's a man. He did not qualify to begin with. Arnisman, who is a 35-time winner in cyclocross racing, retired from the sport shortly after the controversy surrounding Killips attempting to push her off the track during a women's competition. So not only is he so piss poor at what he does that he can't compete with other men, but he has to cheat even when he's pretending to be a woman by pushing women off the track. How is this man taken seriously? Why... Isn't he being publicly humiliated and shamed? He's a piece of garbage. And I don't say that about people very often. I think I've only said it twice. This is human feces. This is a garbage human. And barely human at that. And yeah, I dehumanized you, you bully. So we got a bully man who can't compete in his own league... So he has to come into the women's leagues, push them around, and then people are standing back and pretending like it's okay and letting him, quote, quote, win. You didn't win, you cheating piece of garbage. Women, you have got to stop this. Stop. The minute a man pulls up next to you in any competition, I don't care if it's the high jump, I don't care if it's running, cycling, horseback riding, I don't care. Swimming, especially swimming. The minute a man saunters in and thinks that he can compete against you leave leave the arena leave the pool walk away stop pretending stop pretending these are women they're not these are men who are cowards and bad at what they do so they know the only way they can win is if they have an unfair (coughs) advantage it's the only way and it's not winning it's cheating and cheaters do not win. So ladies, stop pretending like you back this. You don't. You're losing scholarships. You're losing jobs. You're losing competitions because these men (laughs) have bullied you into pretending that there's something they're not. And until you stop that, they're going to keep doing it. Don't buy into their delusion. We, we don't. Why, why are we celebrating mental illness? Well, we have a whole month celebrating mental illness now. It's supposed to be Mental Health Awareness Month, not celebrate people who are nuts month. By the way, um, 
Aronsman said she felt as though racing directly against male cyclists and women's events had become so discouraging that she decided to end her cycling career. Yeah, so women are actually real women, actual women are leaving their own sport because delusional, opportunistic, cheating men are taking over. It's like feminism has been sent back to the dark ages. <laughs> and you let them. You let them. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> All righty. Oh, this will, if that didn't get us booted off of YouTube, this will. I'm not going to dwell too much on this because the show's drawing to a close, and I really want to concentrate on news of the wonderful or to end the show. We do have a, a doozy of a story. Yes, we do. Hi, Max. All right. So, apparently, I, I, so colormesurprise.com, Moderna Therapeutics was well aware of the health risks associated with experimental mRNA vaccine technology years before the COVID pandemic emerged in 2020. A 2017 report by STAT explains how Moderna began running into problems with the experimental mRNA tech during its development of a vaccine for Kriglinasia, a rare genetic disorder. From STAT, in order to protect mRNA molecules from the body's natural defenses, drug developers must wrap them in a protective casing. For Moderna, that meant putting its Kregler Nahar therapy in non nanoparticles made of lipids. And for its guests, those nanoparticles created a daunting challenge. Dose too little, and you don't get enough enzyme to affect the disease. Dose too much, and the drug is too toxic for patients. Yikes. So that's a tightrope not worth walking. From the start, Moderna's scientists knew that using mRNA to spur protein production would be a tough task, task, so they scoured the medical literature for diseases that might be treated with just small amounts of additional protein. And that list of diseases is very, very short, said the former employee who described Bansell as needing a Hail Mary. Kriglinasiar was the lowest hanging fruit. Yet Moderna could not, real, could not make its therapy work, former employees and collaborators said. The safe dose was too weak, and repeat injections of a dose strong enough to be affected had troubling effects on the liver in annual, in animal oh, studies. Groovy. So, they they knew. Yeah. All right. And still, people who also knew were shut down for talking about it. So. Yet, yeah. despite the uncertainty of the mRNA technologies, technologies promise and looming economic headwinds for the company, Moderna CEO Stephanie Bansell projected unbounded confidence, according to Stat. I'm sure that five years from now we'll look at 2017 as the inflection point that Moderna went for a liftoff, she prophetically said in 2017. We have a chance to transform medicine, and we won't quit until we are done and we have impacted patients. Do I really need to keep reading this? No, I think you got all the evilness out at once. (laughs) So they knew, and they... I'm I'm not going to swear. They did it anyway. Yep. Just like we said. And they went on to make millions of dollars uh, using something, if not the same, then similar, that did not undergo clinical trials beforehand thanks to the emergency use authorization from the CDC. Mm-hmm. The same people have been misguiding us for this whole episode. And if you're smart, you'll not pay any attention to again. Actually, that reminds me. Chuck. Uh, Chuck's reporting on the person taking hair of Fauci's place. So let's, let's see what Chuck has to say, and then we'll wrap it up with a pretty red bow with News of the Wonderfuller. And now, CCW News presents Holy Crap, This Is Actually Happening! Indicting Trump Edition, June 11th, 2023. I'm Chuck U. Farley. 
The big news this week is that yet more hard evidence of Joe Biden's decades of corruption has been proven true. On top of the fact that he's on video bragging about it, but I digress. So the Democrats indicted Trump. Democrats are so desperate to deflect from their abject failure on every front that they're resorting to silencing everyone who points it out. From James O'Keefe to Tucker Carlson to Bill Maher. Sadly, the idea of an honest, effective Democrat is harder to swallow than the secret invasion of extraterrestrials, so in lieu of the former, they're literally running with the latter. In a press briefing from his home in Mar-a-Lago, President Trump stated that he prefers aliens that don't crash land in Vegas, so the Democrats indicted him for being a Martian spy. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. President Brandon has selected Furor Fauci's replacement, and she's a doozy. Mandy Cohen appears on video as a clueless, giggly little girl who believes it's great fun to conspire with other mean girls worldwide to shut down schools, churches, and all public gatherings, as well as mandating experimental medical treatments and face diapers. Just like her hero Fauci, she literally got every single thing wrong about the entire pandemic and plans to continue the tradition. Cohen is the latest diversity hire to be picked for her politics and her privates, as she has very little, like Fauci, almost zero actual medical experience, so of course she's the perfect person to be in charge of a nation's health. At least instead of a bitter little troll dictator, we'll get an infantile Barbie tyrant. So there's that. When asked how he felt about the replacement, Trump said that he is sorry he let Fauci rule the nation and would like to see someone in that position who actually knows what the hell they're doing for once, which led to a North Carolina indictment for hurting Barbie's feelings. Elsewhere in North Carolina, Ted Kaczynski, otherwise known as the Unabomber, Epstein himself in his maximum security jail cell because he just couldn't take another Pride Month. The Rainbow Mafia indicted Trump for laughing. In other Bond villain news, evil billionaire George Soros announced that he will be handing over his democracy-destroying Open Society Foundation to his son, Alexander. The operation went as flawlessly as when he handed over hiding Jews to the Nazis during what he said were the best years of his life. Since China has proven that they can get away with indoctrinating our children, buzzing U.S. jets, and floating spy balloons over the entirety of the continent, the CCP is now bragging that they have had a spy center set up in fellow communist nation Cuba since at least 2019. The Biden administration says that it has stepped up its efforts to prevent Chinese spying by lifting sanctions, increasing trade, accepting massive bribes, and indicting Trump for doing a better job. For CCW News, this has been holy crap. This is actually happening. I'm Chuck U. Farley. Good night, and may God help us. Here on Counterculture Wise, we may rant, we may rave, but most of all, we go against the current culture because we believe to the core of our beings that humans are good and the world is an amazing and beautiful place. At the beginning of our show, we give you news of the weird and wonderful, but that is just the tip of the magnificent iceberg that is our world. We now present news of the wonderfuller. All right, we always like to end on a high tear jerking note, so here we go. A mother of three working a double shift at a Chili's restaurant in Traverse City, Michigan, received the tip of a lifetime. Michelle, oh boy, Schubach? decided to gnash her in honor of her own son who passed away from positional asphyxia when, oh, baby, when he was five months old at his daycare. That's like crib death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On the ninth of every month, Soupbach performs an act of kindness in his honor, and her family calls it gnashing. Aww. So when the family crossed paths with Tracy Colley at Chili's, Soupbach said she felt Nash had brought them together. We like to think he brings us to the right people, Soupbach tells Kelly in the video. She surprised Kelly with a $1,000 tip, the biggest tip she's ever received. Gosh, I hope so. She immediately started crying. 
Before we tipped her, we talked about her three boys, the 14-hour shift she is working to make ends meet. She was so kind and promised to pay it forward. She was still crying when we left, and I heard a couple, oh, my gods, from the wait staff in the back, Shootbox said. I love it when people take tragedy and turn it into something good. That's a beautiful story. Well, this story. is another story of a potential tragedy turning out great. This is, uh, this is a story of a cute little doggy woggy. It's like a golden. It's a golden. A dog named Luck proved to be quite lucky after walking out of an animal hospital 54 days after being shot during an active robbery. Oh, sweetheart. The video of Luck's heroic goodbye is understandably tugging at social media users' heartstrings, and once you watch the viral, cri- the viral cli- li- li- clip, you'll, li- 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 under- you'll understand why. In a video posted to Instagram, Instagram by at goodnews underscore movement, that's garnered 1.9 million views. By the way, it's now up to more than four. In one day, Luck is seen walking down a hallway lined with people at the animal hospital who are cheering him on as he s- struts his warrior doggo stuff. <laughs> the, doggo s- the dog stops every few steps to accept some head scratches from his fans, who likely had a hand in helping nursing him back to tell wagging health. After the dog darts out of frame in the video, his owners are seen happily following behind, and one even embraces a staff member in a bear hug, and his gratitude is nearly palpable. Apparently, the pup arrived at the hospital 54 days after being shot and severely injured in a robbery, per the post caption. Luck was hospitalized at this time and underwent three successful surgeries. Today was his long-awaited release from the hospital, Thanks to the medical staff for saving his life, the caption concluded, along with three clapping emojis. Aww. So you can watch the video. I'm watching it now. Such a beautiful dog. Yeah, she's gorgeous. He. Lovely doggy. He. All right. He. He's not a transgender doggy. <laughs> Here's to luck. The dog's incredible recovery. Godspeed. Amen. Hey, thank you so much, especially our dear friends Nick and those in chat for joining us today. It's been a fun show. It always goes by so fast. I'm so glad we had this time together. Yank, 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 yank. (laughs) Folks, tune in next week. We are going to have an amazing guest who is an incredible father, a very faithful man. We had a wonderful conversation that went a little bit long. But it's totally worth it. So do tune in to hear Dan Beegler, the author of... Through um, Fields and Fire. Through Fields and Fire. He is a fellow Marine with Mr. Jim, then a fellow shiny noggin. So these two had a lot to talk about. It was a lot of fun, and you will thoroughly enjoy the interview. We will see you next week. We love you. Bye. Bye. Counterculture Wise is a Stormcat production. Thank you for joining our growing family of listeners. All links from the show are available on our website, counterculturewise.com. Find our archives on any of your favorite podcast hosts. We engage in satire, commentary, and generally laugh at the ridiculousness of our crumbling society. Our only medical or financial advice is to not follow any financial or medical advice given by podcasters. Our animations, interviews, holy crap segment, and other videos are put out on BitChute and Rumble, and only in part on YouTube because they hate free speech. Our show is entirely funded by listeners like you. Visit our ever-expanding merch store or our subscribe star, where you can get outtakes, extra videos, and sneak peeks. If you would like to be a guest on our program, feel free to contact us via our website. Just click on the link at the top that says, be a guest on our show. For more fun and cat pics, please visit our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. For complaints about our show, please fill out the ID10T form on our website, and we will give it the attention it deserves. Meanwhile, no matter how cruel the world may be around you, always remember the importance of kindness. Be kind to each other. Be kind to animals. And be kind to yourself. See you you next next week. week.